Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and children of all ages, welcome to today's Artist Heart Show. In this week's episode, we are going to be visiting Denure and Denure Castle. We'll be sharing with you some of the legends and the iconic figures that have emerged from the wonderful land of Denure, located in South Asia. We'll also be telling you the story about the haggis and the legend that is, and we'll also be revealing to you another brand new speed painting, which which this week features aptly named the soul of the sea. That and so much more on today's show, so welcome one and welcome all. Wherever you are, wherever you're bound, here's to deja vu. I'll be seeing you next time around. Over the sea, so far from me, friends that I knew suddenly flew, spreading their wings. This week's episode of The Artist's Heart brought to you live from the beautiful beaches of Denur. As you can see behind me, the sun is just setting. We've picked perfect timing. Also, as you may be able to see in the distance, Ailsa Craig. Away in the distance as well, we've got Aaron. Aaron always seems to take part in these films that we put together. And you can hear as well the sea lapping up against the shore. The wind is picking up a little bit, but it's perfect, perfect timing. For some wonderful photos and to shoot some footage for you guys especially that watch the artist heart so stay tuned enjoy the show guys and i will see you at the end someone famous around these parts was charles rennie mackintosh a celebrated worldwide as an architect designer and an artist he was born in glasgow and received his schooling his art school training and architectural apprenticeship from glasgow while he studied at Glasgow School of Art, Macintosh had great friends known as the Immortals and holiday repeatedly in Carrick. So there's a little bit of information, guys, around these parts for you. Now for this next segment, I was just going to stand in a field looking pretty and tell you all about it. But why stand there looking pretty when I can take you over and show you an up-close and personal look at Ailsa Craig? Yes, that big lump of rock that I spoke of at the beginning of the show. Now not many people know this, but Edinburgh is built upon a dormant volcano. No need to panic folks, it's been dormant for many thousands of years. Many thousands of years however, it erupted. A huge chunk of rock flew in the sky, past Glasgow, Paisley, Troon, Preswick, Air, and it landed right here in Denure. I often tell students to close their eyes and imagine standing in a field when this flew by. It is now a bird sanctuary to some of the most rarest birds in all of Britain. And for the first time ever, I want to give you guys the opportunity to see it up close and personal. So enjoy.
my dear puppets, it's now time to begin painting, and as I reveal to you the soul of the sea. In you suddenly flew in spreading their wings. Years gone by, like the albatross sky. Poverty days so far away, saying goodbye. Scotland and bring you to our friends once more at Visit Scotland to tell you the story of the Haggis. Our story begins in the mists of time and has been passed down through the centuries to generations of Scots, a tale of where wild land and wild life unite. It is a legend full of mystery and survival. The story of the wild haggis. Haggis scoticus can be found all over the country, but they aren't easy to spot with their rough brown fur and distinctive stance. Hiding deep in the dense trees and shrubs they are even harder to catch. Two of their legs are shorter than the others to help them run faster around the steep hills and over rough terrain. And they need to be fast too, as they have been the target of haggis hunting for centuries. The skilled huntsmen of all ages head into the forests across Scotland in search of the clans of haggis. My grandfather used to say the wild haggis are good at sensing humans, and he would spend hours just waiting for a glimpse of one. But it has been ages since the wild haggis has been spotted in the wilderness in Scotland. Nowadays, one place you're certain to find a haggis taking the centre stage is during the grand feast at a Burns supper. Every 25th of January, from Scotland to Sydney and beyond, celebrations take place to mark the anniversary of the birth of one of the country's best-loved poets, Robert Burns. In an evening filled with food, drink, music, verse and song, the haggis is right at the heart of the celebrations. Burns was such a fan of its distinctiveness that he even wrote a poem about it. His knife see rustic labour down and cut you up in ready slight. The haggis. The address to a haggis is a special dedication, highlighting the importance of this traditional Scottish dish and is recited at every Burns Supper event. Fair fa, your honest sonsy face. Great chieftain, hold the pudding race. Aboon the maw ye take your place, pinch, tripe, or therm. Weel are ye worthy wa grace, as langs my erm. So the next time 
you're enjoying a quiet wander through Scotland's woods and wild places. Be sure to keep your eyes peeled. You never know exactly when and where the wild haggis will appear. From one Scottish legend to another, let our attention now turn to the Newer Castle. The site dates from the late 13th century. The earliest charter from the land, however, dates from 1256, but the remains of the building are 15th and 16th century in origin. One tradition is that the castle was built by the Danes, another states that the Mackinons received the castle from Alexander III as a reward for their victory at the Battle of Larks. The castle is the point of origin in which the Kennedys of Carrick, who once ruled over much southwestern Scotland, and were granted the lands in 1357. Not to be confused, of course, with renowned American Kennedy family, which came from County Wexford in Ireland. Bet you didn't know that? In August 1563, Mary, Queen of Scots, visited the castle for three days during her tour around the West Country. This place holds so much history and heritage, and it is a must for anyone who wants to know more about Scotland. Okay, so let's continue with our little painting here, aptly named Soul of the Sea. Now this painting was inspired during a phase I was going through with seascapes. As you can see here, the development of the painting was something I was really, really working on at this period in time. The beautiful purples in the sky, the blues of the water, really convey something very, very special in this painting which actually was bought by a collector in Glasgow, of all places. Now I feel that you might be a wee bit sleepy after all of that travelling, so it's time to wake up. Well, let me show you the final little painting, boys and girls. I thought you might like to see, no pun intended. Well, that sun is so bright. It's just going down. Fish over Ailsa Craig. do it for this week's episode of the artist heart i hope you enjoyed the tutorial and i hope you also enjoyed the tour around denier and seeing ailsa craig as well so until next time take care and god bless 
Before we close up, folks, I want to give you a special bonus behind-the-scenes glimpse of Scottish sunsets. I have had the privilege of traveling in all over the world, and literally I have yet to find sunsets that are as stunning and as awe-inspiring as these that we get in Scotland. So to close out our show, join me in enjoying the beauty of Scottish sunsets.